from Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis, it's The Number Show, starring Zero and the Digits, with special guest, The Number B. And now, here's your host, Zero! Hey, thanks everybody! Thank you! And Happy New Year! 2019! Wow, it seems like only last year that I couldn't believe it was 2018! I've made some resolutions. Did everybody make resolutions? Mine is to get in shape. A few too many of those holiday cookies. Of course, I don't want to slim down too much or people will start confusing me with one! <laughs> what about you, Digits? Any of you have any New Year's resolutions? I have three New Year's resolutions. Why three? The numbers lady gave me geometry puzzles to play with over the holidays. I discovered a lot of relationships between nine and three. One thing I discovered was that I am the number of small square floor tiles inside a large square with each side three units long. Folks told me that I can then be called three square. L9, you don't look like a square, but if you are, then I'm your square root. Square root, yeah, let's see, see it. it. Shall we have L9 show us what she's discovered? I see it. There are nine equal squares in a three by three arrangement. Like the game Tic Tac Toe. Sudoku. Home windows. So what are your three resolutions? One, discover geometry in art. Two, find designs involving nine. Three, improve my playing of the nine stringed Kelstone. Wow, that sounds like a lot to do. I hadn't heard of the Kell Stone instrument until viewing day nine of the 12 Notes of Christmas film. We've got a great show for you tonight. How do I know that? Because we've got one of the most fascinating numbers I know, the number Fee. Fee will help me with my first New Year's resolution. Trust me, you get Fee going and she can just go on and on and on. And she's always popping up in the strangest of places. So stick around. We'll be right back with a fabulous fee. Let number nine window cleaners help you discover beauty outside. And we're back. And I can't tell you how excited I am to welcome our next guest. You've seen her in the design of everyday playing cards, art and architecture, and spirals of pine cones and cauliflower heads. Everybody, please give a warm welcome to the number Fee! Welcome! Welcome! It's so nice to have you here! It's so great to be here! I love Numberopolis, and I know a great town. I've been found all over the place. You've been called the Golden Mean and the Divine Proportion. You've had quite a career, truly an inspiration. Everyone viewing from Homer School, all places Fee mentions will be downloadable from the Numbers Alive website, www.numbersalive.org. I've been into architecture and nature for as long as I can remember. I've been found in the Great Pyramid of Giza. You can see me in the work of artists like Leonardo da Vinci, the surrealist painter Salvador Dali, the modernist architect Le Corbusier, and the composer Debussy. I have been found in patterns of fingers, plant leaves, seeds, I show up in the pentagram, the standard five-pointed star. Now, I understand that you're here promoting a new project. Why don't you tell us a little about that? Thank you. Well, 
It's kind of a new project of the numbers lady, and January 6th is actually the perfect day to kick it off. So tell us, what's so special about January 6th? Well, in the United States, people write the date January 6th as 1 slash 6. My value is between 1 and 2, but closer to 2. 1.6 is a good approximation. So this would be... Fee day. Fee day, of course. So you would have your own special day. Actually, I'd like to think of it as a day not just for me, but for all the numbers to think of themselves in art and nature. Everyone does not write dates the same. What if I write dates as day and then month? Then fee day would be June 1st. So if you travel, you could celebrate twice in a year. Worldwide, I'm related to a very famous sequence, the Fibonacci sequence. It's named after Mr. Fibonacci. What a, what a, wow. what a funky dude. What's a sequence? A sequence is a list of numbers, images, or sounds one after the other that follow a pattern. Sometimes the difficulty is determining the pattern so you can keep the sequence going. Guess what number we're going to start off with? One. Do it again. Okay. Now add those two together. What do you get? One plus one equals two. <laughs> Remember, the numbers lady always tells us to identify the units before doing any arithmetic. What things should we be adding or counting together? How about mints? Works for me. So now, put up another one. And here's where it really starts to take off. We're going to keep adding the previous two numbers in the sequence. So, one mint plus one mint equals... Uh, uh, two mints. Now, add the last two number of mints. One mint plus two mints equals... Uh, uh, three mints. Perfect. Now, we'll go a little faster. Two mints plus three mints... Five mints. Three mints plus five mints... Ooh, uh, eight mints. The pattern continues forever. My discovery in geometry showed me to look at this pattern using squares. I was told it creates the golden spiral, like the spiral created by the chambered nautilus as it grows. That's amazing. I don't actually understand how you relate to this Fibonacci sequence. It's actually a bit complicated and includes the square root of 5 and limits. Like 3 is the square root of 9. I like the wonderful pictures better. You know, you sound a little like another one of our friends. Let me guess. You're talking about Pi. That's right. Pi and I go way back. I am a huge fan of Pi's work with circles. Another friend without a Greek name is E, the base of the natural logarithm known as Euler's number. Like pi and e, my decimal expansion goes on forever. You hear that? I suggest you invite them soon and create E-Day on February 7th and celebrate Pi Day on March 14th. What a great idea! Audience, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who are they? I would love to see them. We've got to take a break. But when we come back, we'll have a fee-related game, and today it's going to be me versus L9 with Fee as the judge. Stay tuned! When you think we're just mints, look again. 
We're back, and it's time for our game! Today's game relates to the first 50 digits in the decimal expansion of Phi. L9 and 0 will compete, and Phi will judge the responses. Once we show you the first 50 digits of Phi's expansion, L9 and 0 will compete to win a Phi mask. L9 and 0, you will each determine how often each number, 0 through 9, appears in the initial 50 digits. Do they count the 1 to the left of the decimal? Of course you count me. Mr. Wonderful is correct. Ready, set, go! It's a tie! Time for a bonus question. Which Team 10 number is the last to show up in Fee's expansion? It's still a tie since both L9 and 0 said 5. Let's try a second bonus question. What is the position that the last Team 10 number first shows up in Fee's expansion? We have a winner! L9 wins the mask! L9, you're now not just the most beautiful single digit number in Numberopolis, you're a gorgeous sequence! It's time for a break, and then thank you notes! Come to Numberopolis to celebrate Fee Day on January 6th. We're back, and time for thank you notes, related to our guest, Fee. Thank you, Fibonacci for identifying the sequence whose squares create the golden spiral. Thank you, Greek alphabet, for providing names to geometric relationships. Thank you, Phi, for showing up in beautiful lines, spirals, and square roots. Whoa, 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 wait up! Six string along, what's wrong? It's this Phi day thing. Right, January 6th. Fee wants to make that fee day. But, but, don't you remember? January 6th is already a holiday. Dr. 007, show us your Twelfth Night Legs. Yellow stockings. Oh, right, how could I forget? Twelfth Night. Hey, sorry, Shakespeare. Sounds like that's already a pretty important holiday for all of you. Well, it's become kind of our thing, since we did a gig with William Shakespeare to celebrate the 12 days of Christmas and his play Twelfth Night. It was pretty awesome, especially the finale at the Globe Theatre in London. What does Twelfth Night have to do with yellow stockings? As part of the story, Mr. Malvolio wants to impress Ms. Olivia. Some folks convince Malvolio that Olivia likes yellow stockings. Malvolio looks foolish and Olivia is confused when he meets her wearing yellow stockings. Let's make January 6th both Twelfth Night Day and Fee Day. Yeah, I don't see why not. Beautiful stockings in infinite colors and designs, including ever-popular yellow with cross garters. All right, that's our show for tonight. I'd like to thank our guest again, the fascinating, fabulous Fee. Thanks to all of you for watching. Think of her when you go to art galleries, look at architecture and patterns in nature, and play with the Fibonacci sequence. Come back next time when we're going to find out the result of Four's DNA test and meet Euler's E. Till next time, so long from Studio 10 in downtown Numberopolis! Happy Fee Day, or whenever it is that you're watching this.
Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun learning some places where I show up in the world. Please like, comment, and subscribe to The Numbers Show. Don't forget to download the learning guide, scavenger hunt, and associated materials from the Numbers Alive website or Teachers Pay Teachers.